Today, more and more companies in developing countries and emerging economies are becoming global producers. The liberalization of consumer markets provides these companies with opportunities for exporting their products to global markets, where they're increasingly required to comply with private standards, a phenomenon on the rise. Consumers and civil society groups in developed economies are increasingly concerned about social and environmental conditions within the supply chains that deliver products to their markets. As reported cases of worker and human rights violations, as well as environmental degradation caused by corporate activity reach the public, consumer confidence in the responsible conduct of the major brands and retailers decreases. As a result, brands and retailers are setting stricter standards. However, since many producers in developing countries have not yet been required to comply with private standards, they have little knowledge about them. The suppliers that were interviewed, they've never, have never heard about private standards. Most of the companies did not have tangible information. Uh, they were complying with various standards, mandatory standards, national standards and so forth, but they didn't have the amount of money or resources spent specifically on uh, complying with private standards. The most usual uh, answer uh, was, well, what's, what are private standards? What do you mean uh, when you say uh, private standards? A supplier entering the market for the first time will need to fulfill some basic qualifications in order to qualify as a potential supplier. It needs the capacity to export and hold sufficient volume to meet large orders and it should be capable of timely delivery. The product must be of high quality and sold at a competitive price and all this in addition to complying with technical regulations in the target market. When exporting to global markets, suppliers in developing countries will, sooner or later, also be required to comply with private standards. But how do private standards really work? Private standards focus on social, safety and environmental issues and are required by brand producers and retailers when they source their products. Faced with this situation, exporting companies can respond in two ways. React in a piecemeal fashion or anticipate the requirements and actively seek to improve their sustainability. How we view standards, how it, it affects our business, actually also um, a small company will tell you something different that, than a big company. But on a general basis, we, we, are, we are suppliers, so we have to comply to the standards of the buyers because we want the orders, so uh, we, we have to comply to them. Uh, we have to do our maximum to, 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 to be able to fulfill the requirements of the buyers. The most important thing is not to do it because somebody asks you to do it because then you obviously end up taking shortcuts. So it's all about you wanting to do it and then doing it correctly. And how does one go about complying with private standards? If a company has to uh, start complying with private codes, I would say the starting point would be to look at the local law. That is very important because every code says you have to, at a minimum, comply with the local law. So you start off looking at the local law, studying it extensively, looking at the private codes that you have to comply with as well and any other um, international codes uh, that you might have to comply with in future. You take all of this, you study them extensively and you can come up with your own standard. So after that, you have to start selecting a team, send it to the factories to uh, practice it at the factories. You have to select a good team. You have to educate them on the standards. You have to do a audit tool because I firmly believe what measures gets done. You have to periodically monitor to make sure that these standards are complied with. What 
what are the costs and benefits of complying with private standards? The costs are obvious. They are like the auditing costs and the costs of compliance action plans. Uh, let's say about the wages, overtime and benefits, payments of such to the workers. Uh, but the benefits, uh, I'd like to emphasize that um, having um, happy workers, first of all, uh, is the biggest benefit for the suppliers. That makes um, productivity, effectivity higher, loyalty is better. So, and good reputation and having new customers, new brands, these are the benefits of the uh, private complying with the private standards. But I'd like to mention about the sustainability as well, because this uh, guidance to private standards, I think it's an important um, work and report, because um, the suppliers the, are the key to sustainability. They should own the uh, compliance uh, and make it into their management systems. Uh, in daily life, in uh, all the parts of the production. The survey and interviews done with exporting companies in the Brazilian furniture sector, the Indian footwear sector and the Turkish textile sector proved that private standards are crucial in seeking to export to global markets. They were all sure that there is a definite Im improvement in buyer perception and uh, market uh, their uh, ability to market their products. They were very sure about it and it was significant and far greater than the cost of uh, uh, complying with the standard. So that they were very sure of and it's proven by their turnover. There is a cost to it, but there's also benefit to it because we understand the buyer that they are the one dealing with um, uh, the, the final consumer. So we have to help them to satisfy the consumer. So there is a benefit to it. This is the first benefit, uh, to be able to satisfy the, the, the supplier, for them to be able to satisfy the consumer. If I were the consumer, I would also like to have a product which is safe, which is uh, up to conformity, and which is uh, very safe to, to, to wear it. Um, that's one point. But the second point as well, you have to not look only at the cost element. It helps you to improve your manufacturing efficiency. Although complaints about the costs involved are abundant, most companies can identify clear benefits as well, including improvements in their internal business processes, increased competitive advantage and employee welfare. Private standards involve costs, investments and benefits for exporters in developing countries. It is the role of United Nations Industrial Development Organization to promote industrial competitiveness and trade, socially inclusive globalization and environmental sustainability. Within this context, we prepared a guide to private standards in garments, furniture and footwear sectors titled Making Private Standards Work For You. It is the product of a project funded by NORAD and has been developed in cooperation with CBI in Netherlands. The guide provides strategic guidance for producers in developing countries and economies in transition so that they can make private standards operate to their advantage. We believe, although we focused on three sectors, it would also be useful for exporters from other sectors, as well as for buyers, capacity building organizations, as well as policymakers. A proactive strategy in dealing with private standards is desirable, as it can create exporting opportunities, but will also lead to more efficiency and sustainability in the company's business operations. It's hoped that suppliers will take this message to heart, making sure that they do not miss the boat, but instead are able to turn private standards to their advantage.